What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. This is where we go back a week and put seven days of tech news videos into one single video to make your life more enjoyable and quicker to the point. And we had a week of craziness for the most part. So first of all, uh, the Galaxy Note 10 uh, Pro has a new name, so you'll hear all about that this week. Also, news about the headphone jack. Um, we have news, uh, some updates coming up for the Galaxy S10 line of phones, um, all kinds of stuff, guys. So if you're into Samsung news and other news as well, we talk about other stuff. So definitely check it out this week and I hope you enjoy it. And also, like I say every week, let me know what your favorite news story is of the week and I will see you in the next one. Let's get into the tech news. If you've been following my channel last couple of days, there's been rumors of the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Pro having a headphone jack. We've seen uh, case manufacturers putting a headphone jack in the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Pro. Well, we have an update on that and a bunch of other things that have to do with the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Pro. So let's, again, like I said, jump right into this. Now, these tweets come from Max Weinbach, who is a XDA TV host and writer for XDA. Now, XDA is a huge website that gives you all kinds of tricks and uh, hacks and things you can do with your Android phone. And amazing website, totally legit. And uh, his tweet, again, we'll go through all of these. So said, my source got to play with a Note 10 and a Note 10 Pro. Here is what they said about it. Number one, both of the models he used had a headphone jack. We're gonna go back to that number one after all this, but that's what he says right there, that both models, Note 10, Note 10 Pro, have headphone jacks. Number two, renders are almost perfect. So the renders that we've been seeing basically look exactly like what you would expect those renders to look like with the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Pro. Number three, S Pen is almost the same as the Note 9, so it doesn't look like any big changes to the S Pen from the Note 9 to the Note 10. Number four, the non-Pro version has no micro SD slot, so it looks like there's no expandable storage with the Galaxy Note 10, but there will be with the Note 10 Pro, so if you need micro SD slot, you're gonna wanna get the Note 10 Pro. Number five, no noticeable software changes. Obviously, that means that they didn't really add anything new to the software side of things with this new phone. Number six, no speaker grill and much smaller bezels. Uh, so there'll be no speaker at the top. Like we've heard, the speaker will lie underneath the display and then there'll be another one on the bottom of the phone. Number seven, power and volume on the left side. And that's what we've seen with the renders. So no big surprise there. Number eight, three cameras vertical on the small one, which is all, AKA the regular Note 10. Three vertical plus one more, so that's four cameras on the pro version of the Note 10 under the flash to the right of the stack. Number nine, this is the last one, both are centered single hole punch cameras. So on the front of the phone, only one camera, have it be the Note 10, Note 10 Pro, you only get one camera. Remember on the Note, on the S10 Plus, you got two cameras. Now to add to some of this craziness, this is his updated tweet that he put out shortly after that one. Update, headphone jack was a fake. Samsung added a fake headphone jack to the unit to trick people. It obviously worked. Type C AKG earbuds in the box. What does that mean? It means that, again, no headphone jack, at least off his latest rumor, which he's hearing on the Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Pro. Again, no headphone jack. Um, I can't explain what we saw with uh, those cases showing it, but he's saying that the ones that his people used where they said there was a headphone jack, it was a fake unit, it was a dummy in terms of that, it was a fake no use headphone jack built into the phone to try to trick them in case rumors got leaked out, they didn't want it to be, I guess, bad press or bad information going out so that people would get upset. And obviously you guys are gonna get upset. I know I'm slightly upset. Um, it's nice that they're gonna add type C AKG headphones in the box, but you know what? I don't use wirelessly charging that much because I can't keep it situated and then use it at an angle or whatever and use it in any way I want, like I could if I had regular headphones and um, uh, it plugged in via USB-C charging. So I it would be nice if they had two USB-C ports, that would take care of the issue overall. That way I could do USB-C headphones and I could also do 
um, USB-C char charging at the same time. That would eliminate the need for a headphone jack. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Galaxy S10 June security update and what it brings with it. It looks like this update is rolling out to the Snapdragon version of phones uh, over in Hong Kong currently. And the update brings with it the ability to use the camera, just the native camera app, as a QR code scanner. So you know those QR codes, you'll be able to go into the camera app and take a picture of it and whatever the action is, bring you to a website or whatever, it'll be able to now do that natively in the camera app. I'm actually surprised this wasn't there from the get-go. Um, it's there now, I guess, with this update. America probably won't get it for like another six years, <laughs> but regardless, it is out or it's being rolled out to S10 phones now. And the last story of the day is kind of a cool product that it will be coming out for Microsoft in either early 2020 or by no later than mid 2020. And that is Microsoft's prepping a foldable dual screen Surface tablet that runs Android apps. And a few facts about them are uh, the dual screens will be nine inches each with a four by three aspect ratio. So think um, I, iPads, uh, that kind of ratio. And then also, like I said, it'll be out by uh, 2020 first quarter or second half of 2020 by the latest. And it will run Windows Core, which is I guess a playoff of like Windows 10 or whatever. We don't have a price or anything that's gonna go along with this. I would assume it's probably gonna be, if I had to guess, I don't know, 700, 800 bucks. I don't think it's gonna be like a $300 tablet. It might be, but I highly doubt it with having two nine inch screens um, and being able to run Android apps and, and Windows apps and all kinds of stuff. I assume it's gonna be fairly expensive. It's probably maybe even a thousand bucks, maybe more, um, but I'm kind of intrigued by it for sure to have a, cause I, I've tried Windows tablets in the past. I haven't been overly, overly excited about them. I've always preferred just a straight up Android tablet better or an iPad or something. Um, we'll see if this kind of changes my feel about Windows products. Uh, cause they generally sometimes make good hardware. So maybe this will be uh, something that I'm interested in. Let me know in the comments. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Samsung Galaxy Buds. Now, if you've been having issues the newest update that was released today should fix them. And they updated a bunch of things in here. So you can see what's new, improved music streaming, as well as phone call quality. So if you've had issues where maybe you had your phone in a certain pocket or your back pocket, or I don't know, just maybe not in direct line of sight with the headphones, it might have cut out on you. And now I was actually having that issue recently as well. It looks like this update fixes that. I saw some comments and it says it has fixed that. Also, uh, phone quality, call quality has been improved as well. Uh, the other, which I know some other people have been having that issue as well, resolved temporary error that occurs when ambient sound is initiated. So that would be, you'd get like a certain error basically on the screen that would stop uh, ambient sound from you know working properly. So that, this fixes that. And then also they modified the battery level display. It displays lower battery level between the two earbuds. An absolute awesome update from Samsung. It's This is a much needed one for sure. And uh, let me know in the comments down below if you've done this update and has fixed the issues that you're having with the headphones because it should at this point. And the last story of the day is about the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 and an app that's gonna come, looks like anyway, pre-installed on it that's made by Microsoft. The app itself is called Your Phone App. I know, not a really good name, but kind of describes what's gonna go on. And what's going to go on is it'll allow your Galaxy Note 10 to deliver texts and notifications to your Windows 10 PC in real time. Also, it'll be able to mirror the entire screen to your PC with, again, this is all through Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, not to, you don't have to do, you don't have no cables attached here. And you'll also be able to drag and drop content like photos and video between the computer and the phone. Now, since this app is most likely going to become pre-installed with the Galaxy Note 10, I would assume it's probably also gonna eventually come to the other Galaxy phones as well. And maybe you'll be able to download it or sideload it and get it to work. But 
even though it seems like it's a, it, its own feature, I would assume it's gonna come to other phones. And why wouldn't it come to the Galaxy S10? The S10 is basically the same phone as the Note 10, at least spec-wise in terms of processor, RAM, and storage amounts. So it definitely should be able to, and then it maybe it'll trickle down there from to the older phones like the Note 9, the S9, and phones like that. But very cool feature, kind of what already happens with iPhones in, in, in some ways. iPhones, you can, uh, you have ways to you know transfer files fairly easy. You have iMessage and FaceTime all linked up. So it's nice to see some commonality coming here between PCs and Galaxy phones at this juncture. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is all about, actually all these stories are about the Galaxy Note 10. The first one though is a, a little comparison of the glass panels of the Galaxy Note 9 and the Galaxy Note 10. Now checking this out, you're gonna see the Note 9 and the Note 10 Plus. Now you're saying Note 10 Plus, we're gonna to get to that more in the next, uh, same video, but, but the next story. But regardless, you can see Note 9 and Note 10 Plus right next to each other and, they, and uh, Ice Universe is saying they are like products that are two years apart and I have to agree with him wholeheartedly. These are a big difference. Look at the bezels on the Galaxy Note 9 versus the Note 10 Plus. It's crazy. They've really cut it down. Obviously, you're getting the camera on the screen rather than the camera up at the top along the bezel, but it looks so much more modern and sleek and sexy. It looks fantastic. Now, speaking of the Note 10 Plus, this next tweet comes from a YouTuber by the name of Tech Talk TV. And I'll be honest, I've never watched his videos, and he does have a video on this, which I will link below. And he got these photos from an Instagram follower that I guess knows him. And you can see here is the first look at the, Ga the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. It'll be called the Note 10 Plus, not the Note 10 Pro as previous rumors have suggestors. And, and these are real life images as well. You'll see the very first image shows Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. So that's gonna be the name, which Note 10 Pro, Note 10 Plus, whatever. It kind of copies, you know, iPhone and whatever other phones to call themselves a plus, but uh, not a big deal on that part. But uh, you can see it's definitely going to be called the Note 10 Plus per this image that's on the screen. And then here's a better image showing off. Uh, the, the, since it's a white screen, you can see the camera cut out at the top with the Let's Go setup in English Canada, and then also the very small bezel at the top and a little bit bigger at the bottom. And then the last image is very blurry, but it shows off the cameras on the back with the flash, Samsung logo in the middle, and then the little sticker that has all the information about the phone. So there you guys go. Big difference in terms of the way it looks versus last generation. It looks so much better, this one, I think, just based off you know smaller bezels and the camera on the screen doesn't bother me. It's already on the screen with my uh, Galaxy Note uh, S10 Plus. I don't know if you can really see it, but it doesn't bother me at all. And if you want to watch videos, it doesn't bother me at all. So it's not a big issue. And then also uh, just seeing those first real life images is amazing. Obviously, we're going to see more of these as time goes on, especially when we get closer and closer and closer to the actual release date of this. So again, if you want to watch his video, I will link it down below. It already has about 32,000 views at this point. So you could be one of the first 100,000 people to watch this video. Why not? Let's get into the tech news first story of the day is today, June 29th, is now the 10th birthday officially for the Samsung Galaxy line of phones. On June 29th, 9th, 2009, the very first Galaxy S phone was released. And take a look at this beauty. This thing is crazy, especially when you can compare it to today's phone. So um, on the left, uh, it looks like, the, I forget, I guess that's the button that shows your, I guess your apps running. Uh, the one on the right is going to be the back button. The bottom left is gonna be the, uh, to, looks like to hang up the phone or pick up the phone and the same thing on the one on the bottom right that'll either hang, it looks like hang up the phone. And then as for specs on this phone, pretty crazy. It had a 3.2 inch display. It had, the display, the resolution was 320 by 480. It was an AMOLED display. 528 megahertz single core CPU. We're up to, I guess, 2.7 or 2.8 gigahertz. And you have like eight processors in there. Uh, 128 megabytes of RAM. Uh, my phone is 12 gigabytes of RAM, which is even more storage than this phone had. It had eight gigabytes of expandable storage. 
um, a five megapixel camera. It did not, it had 3G, it looks like GSM and HSDPA, so it had 3G support and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So just a crazy change of, and look at the, I mean, look at even the screen and what you got in terms of what the, the software looked like. It looks so dated compared to today. And then if you just wanna see the lineage of the 10 Galaxy S phones from you know the first one to the most recent one, which we have with the Galaxy S10, just a, a I, I mean, the, the, all the most, a lot of these phones are really, really nice looking, but obviously the newer is, is so much better. And then lastly, this tweet coming from Ice Universe is a rendered image is according to Galaxy Note 10 plus leaked photos. If you didn't see my uh, video uh, yesterday where I said that they're gonna sh change the name or it wasn't gonna be called the Note 10 Pro. It's now, now gonna be called the Note 10 Plus. That's why it says Note 10 Plus in this tweet. And nothing really new to this, just a, another, you know, these are rendered images. Someone created these off what we've been seeing lately. And uh, you can see the camera in the top middle. You can see the volume buttons on the top, uh, on the side left, and then right below that, you see the power button. You can't see any of the ports at the bottom just because of the way this is angled, but regardless, it gives you a good look at the front of the phone with the small bezel at the top, and then slightly larger bezel at the bottom. Again, Galaxy Note 10 Plus with its 6.75 inch display. Let's get into the tech news. We only have one story today and it is about a new feature coming to Android called Fast Share. And what this is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to share files with each other via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth with no internet connection. Now it's going to be similar to what Apple has called AirDrop and it's also similar to another Android app that used to be out there called Android Beam. And the way this is going to work, like I said, is uh, you can do it a couple of ways. Once you get to the share menu of um, you know, sharing a file, it will bring up uh, Fast Share. So you can choose Fast Share through that menu or you can go into Settings and then uh, Fast Share will show up in Settings as well. But once you're in there, basically it's pretty easy. All you're gonna end up doing is uh, typing in the device name of where you want to send it. Every device will have its own name. Uh, and then tap turn on. It requires Bluetooth and location to be enabled with prox uh, physical proximity also factored in. And basically the person has to be very close to you in order for you to share the file. And I'm, hopefully it'll be something that's simple for everybody to do, but basically you won't need, uh, like I said, internet to share these files. You can do it over Bluetooth or, you know, direct Wi-Fi with each other. So basically you turn one phone into like basically quote unquote a router and then, and then the other one acts to receive from that router. And then after that, again, you can share those files. And uh, there's another feature in there that if you're always, if you want to add someone basically to your preferred visibility, which is like your little safety circle, uh, they can get files a little bit easier, a little bit quicker in terms of having to go through less steps to get it because uh, they are uh, putting you in their visibility preferred list and it'll just, again, make it a little bit easier for them to send and receive files with each other. So that is all we have today, a very extremely slow news day, but uh, I still think that's a pretty cool feature and I thought I wanted to talk about it with you guys. What do you guys think? Is that a feature you can see yourself using uh, sharing files without internet? Um, direct to rect uh, with somebody. Uh, I, I just don't think I'll end up using it. Maybe, I mean, it depends how fast it, it, it goes in terms of uh, maybe I want to send a big video file to somebody, but it's going to be slower over LTE or, or 5G or, or, or Wi-Fi. I can see myself using it then, but probably not so much. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys down the road. Peace.